Kalisa, who came to Women's Day and he is going to explain us what are the subjects we have to uh, finish uh, in first year, in second year, in third year, in fourth year. So can you please explain the students which subjects they have to do? NCA orientation program, it is very vital that uh, you start your preparation much earlier. Now, in first year, when you remember the total, we have 19 subjects for NCA. And among the 19 subjects, we are dividing them into three different subjects. And we are also having some clinical subjects. And in between, we have some parallel. Three clinical subjects are your basic subjects, like your anatomy, physiology, form. Now, in anatomy, now you should be very strong in your preclinicals, all your first year and second year subjects. Now, the core of understanding anatomy is that it helps you ease out your preparation for surgery. Physiology, once you understand physiology, you will be able to understand the mechanisms, you will understand what is normal, then in pathology you will understand what is abnormal and in medicine you will learn the treatment part of it. Pharma is uh, the most important subject, whether you become a gynecologist, whether you become a surgeon, whether you become a medicine or a pulmonologist, you will have to deal with drugs. So knowing pharmacology is very essential and it, in the MCA pattern also, all these subjects, anatomy, physio, patho, pharma, micro, these all are given very high weightage. In your first year, in your first year, please concentrate on anatomy. From your beginning of second year, finish off physiology and biochemistry. And in the second year, ending onwards, if you can concentrate in learning pharma, patho and micro properly, you will be well prepared with your preclinical subjects. Please understand that uh, the integral part of making you a good doctor is your strong basis on pathology and pharmacology. Pathology is study of diseases. Pharmacology is uh, treatment part, study of drugs. So once you know the disease and you know the treatment part, you are almost half a doctor. So you, your knowledge with pathology and pharmacology, I would suggest all students read good books for pathology and pharmacology. We have Robbins, which is a very good book. We recommend strongly for second year students. It's a lengthy book, but you need to start up earlier. You'll be able to do it only in second year, not at the end of second year end of your sixth year syllabus. In your first year, when you are here in the university, you will listen to the classes with your anatomy and uh, by the end of first year, you should be done with your anatomy. Because what happens in foreign, foreign countries is uh, they start their physiology and biochemistry very late. So at the end of first year, you should be very sure with anatomy at a licensing exam pattern or the NCI pattern. In the beginning of second year, you should, in the first semester of second year, you should be able to complete physiology and biochemistry. So this will be done in your second sem also, right? And the third sem also it will be continuing. So I think if you can just finish off this too, in the beginning of second year, in the first semester of second year, you will be able to complete three subjects by the end of your 18 months of your studies. From the second sum of uh, second year, start off with your micro. And you will have at the vacation time and at the beginning of third year, you start with your basic pathology and pharmacology. So this way, by the end of your third year, you should be able to complete an act, physiology, biochemistry, pathology, pharmacology and microbiology. Now this, if you have done thoroughly, this is the foundation with, on which you will complete your MCA program. So this is very, but you should judge if you are standing in third year, are you done with this subjects or not. And if you feel there is some lacuna, please catch up fast. See that you use up your vacations, see that you are organizing your studies in a 
good enough pattern or enough scheduled pattern so that you will be able to complete as early as possible. After this, you will have to find time to do the subjects like in the beginning of fourth year, I would want you to concentrate on short subjects also like EMB. We also have forensic here where you can do it in your second year but here you can plan it in third year or in the end, beginning of fourth year. After year B, you can start with ophthalmology. These are end subjects but very high yielding subjects. ENT, forensic, ophthalmology. And uh, start off your preparation with community medicine. This will be slightly different from what you study in your universities here. This is, you have to know the Indian statistics, Indian vaccination schedule, you have to know what the programs, health programs are happening in India, the rural health programs that happen in India. So it's a completely different uh, subject that you have to concentrate completely based on Indian standards and also please remember this, so you call this social health preventive medicine or a community medicine which will be completely different from what you study in your universities abroad. So this is a complete and this is a very high yielding subject. This keeps you close to 30 marks on your MCI. So that's, uh, that's considered a big subject. Remember your SPM, obstetrics, gynecology, medicine, surgery, they are considered big subjects. The more yielding subjects, they give close to 30 marks on MCA. And your anesthesia, psychiatry, dermatology, these are considered your minor subjects, which give you hardly 5 to 10 marks on your MCA. So keep weightage to this thing and community medicine, which is not, that is not uh, taught at the university levels in different abroad countries, but it should be done on Indian standards. This is going to be very, very high yielding. This is going to fetch you 30 months on the exam and this is completely new for you if you are studying abroad. Now, once you come in your 5th year and your 6th year, focus your study mainly on medicine, surgery, obstetrics and therapy. So I would suggest it because these are big subjects and each of them will be 30 marks. Each of it will fetch you 30 marks. So very close to your examinations if you can get this done. And try to save the last 6 months of 6th year to do your short subjects. So in 5th year beginning, so 6th year first time, if you are able to complete medicine, surgery, obstetrics and gynecology, you will get the last semester to do your short subjects that include anesthesia, psychiatry, dermatology, radiology. So by the end of 6th years, you are able to complete all these subjects that are required for your MCI. And after this, you have a review session done at the end of 6th year, where you revise right from the anatomy part again, with all the exams, mock test, grand test and all. And by the end of 6 months of the uh, passing your degree year, you will be attempting your first MCI examination. And with this strategy, and if you are aggressive in this approach, when I mean study anatomy, I don't mean just to read the theory part of it. Please solve questions topic wise. Study upper limb and try to solve MCQs topic wise. This is the same strategy that you followed already. You know the difference between your 11th and 12th preparation. You know the difference between your pre-med preparation. Please understand, your licensing exam is essential. It is like your MCQ based exam. And you cannot uh, be given a licensed legal degree to practice without this exam. This is essential. Without this, no matter what your scores in your university are, no matter what the level of uh, uh, academics that you are getting here, it all comes down to whether you cleared your MCI or not. So please strategize in a fashion that you give due importance to your MCI preparation right from the beginning in your universities. So incorporate this MCI licensing exam programs or MCI licensing preparation right from the first year and that is probably the, nobody will know if I, if I ask you or if I have to know whether it has been useful my 11th and 12th score or whether it is useful with my pre-med score. Is my 11th and 12th being more fetching or is my pre-med uh, rank more fetching? Obviously the difference will be with your pre-med rank rather than with your 11th and 12th score. The same difference will be with your university score and with your MCI. 
So please give. Nobody gives importance to 11th and 12th and the cost of pre-med. Everybody prepares for pre-med. This is something, this, this strategy is something that you have already done. This strategy is something you have already followed. Don't forget, it is important that you give due importance to your licensing exam and carry on with the university schedules to get the degree, to get the semester exams done, to get the university exams done on time. But due importance, our, my, if you take my advice, high priority should be given to your licensing examinations. And the whole clue, there is no difference between a student who is passing an MCI and a student who is not passing an MCI. The difference is this guy who passed MCI started the preparation much early. The guy who is not clearing the MCI is starting at a very late stage after end of six years. So I hope you all will uh, organize yourself and try to be the ones who try to clear MCI in the first attempt. And it all depends when you start. Okay, all the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much.